Hey guys, welcome to the wood shop. Today we're going to be working on a project that's kind of unique to what we usually do. We're actually being incorporating some, some fabric into our project. We built this uh, shaker settee, and traditionally a lot of these settees or chairs would have a woven seat bench, our seat and back sometimes. So today we're gonna to do a short little video on how we do this weave on this bench seat and back. The first step we're going to take here is we need to secure uh, the tape to this side rung. We're going to do multiple passes moving from left to right here. Uh, this is called the warp, W-A-R-P. So we're going to do the warp first. Um, and I'm not so concerned. I'm going to tack this on. And as you see, I'm going to kind of just keep wrapping this around. Uh, I'm not going to make it too tight at first. We can always come back and snug it up. I'm using just some, uh, I believe these are number four upholstery tacks. And I'm just going to go ahead and do one more here. Okay, so now that we have uh, our tape tacked on, we are gonna start doing the warp, which is the front to back weave. So I've got this big roll here. Uh, one thing to note, make sure you go up and under that first rail. That way, it will be sure to keep your, your tape parallel. And what you wanna do is at the end, you wanna make sure it's parallel front and back. Now this bench does not have a taper to it, so I don't need to worry about filling in those gaps. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just working this around. I'm not trying to get it super tight at this point because we'll go back in when we get across a little ways and we'll tighten that up. It's a little awkward at first when you're working with a big roll. What I to try to do is try to keep that roll fairly tight as far as tight together because it makes it a lot easier to work it through. I also want to mention when ordering this tape, make sure you order it in a complete roll. We bought this tape online. There are a couple suppliers. Uh, we have found that they all have a, a calculator that will help you tell you how much tape you need so you don't run short. So we try to buy enough tape that I don't have to stitch the tape together. And what I mean by that, you may if you, have, if you have a need for longer than, say, a 50-yard roll or a 75-yard roll, you may have to seam that together. And to do that, I typically will want to do it on the bottom side. So all you're doing is just doing a stitch, an end-to-end -end stitch. Some of these companies will sell these as remnants. And when I say remnants, I'm just meaning pieces or lengths that may not be the full roll. So I've made my way about halfway across here, a little less. And what I need to do at this point is I've got some upholstery foam and I want to slide this upholstery foam and work this inside here. And this is not just adding cushion, but it's kind of adding support for the fabric because you do have a void in there. And what I'm trying to do is just fill that void. So just working that in there. Now that I've got my foam in here, what I've been doing, I'm just kind of working back uh, to the start. And what I'm doing is just kind of tightening up these pieces of tape, my wraps, and I'm not, I'm not pulling these cinching these super tight. What I'm just doing is taking a lot of the slack out of it. I'm also making sure that I get them snug together here and in the back, making sure I'm keeping these parallel. And it's also kind of a good time to check and make sure that you don't have any twists in your tape because you hate to get to the end and realize that maybe you have to unwind it and start over again. So just getting these snug and with, with rails this long or with spindles this long, um, these will flex and you wanna make sure that you don't get these so tight that you start to pull these together. All right, so when I get that done, I'm just gonna continue wrapping the tape. And as you can see, I'll probably have to add another piece of foam as I get a little further across.
Okay, so I've gotten my, my fabric or my tape uh, wrapped around. The warp is done with the red. I'm going to, I've cut it short here uh, of the front rail. I'm just going to tack it just like I did on the other end to this inside face. Again, using the, just the number four um, upholstery tack, carpet tack. And we'll do a, a second one for good measure. Okay, so now I've turned the bench over on its uh, upside down, and I am taking the woof tape, which is going to be from left to right or crossways, and I'm tacking that to the underside of the cross rail. I'm making sure I'm tacking that so my first, I'm going up and over the top of that, of that rail. So, now we're going to invert the bench to start our woof. Now, what I've had to do is because I can't really pass the roll through each individual one of these, I had to cut my tape. And I wanted to show you this, this is very unscientific. But since I know how much tape I use to do the warp, I'm left with this big a roll. I basically cut off that much tape so I know I have enough to do the woof. Uh, I did cut off a, a few extra uh, feet of this just to make sure I can get to the end because I don't want to have to stitch this together. So this is a little more time consuming. Obviously, you've got to pull this whole big spool through there. and. You want to make sure that you don't get any twists or turns. So what I'm trying to do is keep the tape flat, keep it orientated in my hand the same direction so when I'm pulling it through I don't have to twist it, or hopefully I don't have to twist it to untangle it. All right, so I found my end. So I'm going to go over the rail and then I'm going to go under that first warp and then alternate as I work my way across. And as I exit on the other side, I'm just pulling, I'm gonna pull that tape through. Obviously, as you work your way through the project, this gets a lot easier as the more and more tape you've used. This is probably the most time consuming part of the whole project, are these first uh, rows of the, uh, of the woof. So I'm just going to kind of pull that down. And we flip the bench over on its back again. And the same process again. I'm keeping the tape oriented so I know I don't have a twist. I'm pulling it through. Okay, so with the first course done, we'll start the second course. After I get that second course started, I just kind of put my fingers in there. I'm pulling that over uh, snug against the first course. Um, and unlike the warp with the woof, I'm trying to kind of create, keep that tension as I go across. I've got enough friction with all those, those overlaps to keep that tape tight. So I'm already starting to work my tension on this. The other thing is too, these rails are a lot less likely to deflect. So I'm not really worried about getting those, but I do want to make sure I'm pushing that over, getting it snug as I work my way across.
Now that we've got our, our final weave in there, uh, we're going to terminate this here. I'm just going to basically, I'm tacking this on the inside of the, of the uh, back leg. And as before, we're going to go ahead and use a couple tacks to do that. And then we'll just trim our excess. So there you have your seat. Do any final straightening um, that you need to do, spacing, and uh, you're ready to go. Uh, the back is going to be done very much the same way, same technique. Um, we'll start with the warp as you go up and down and then finish it with the woof going left to right.